let's uh, take a look at our picks. So here they are, uh, my picks, Jared's picks. Simple as that. Uh, we both have four picks this week, so it wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't by design. Just the way it all turned out. And matter of fact, uh, looking at your picks, Jared, uh, two of your players, uh, I, I think I would have had on my picks. Uh, and the, they are Wyndham Clark and uh, mm -hmm. Dietrich. So I think Dietrich is an excellent long shot like you do. And I think Wyndham Clark, uh, considering he had that finally, that top 10 we've been waiting for, that yep. we don't know, could be a blip because he hasn't played all that well the last few months. Or it could be the sign that his game is, is back. And if it is, you're taking advantage of him at 45 to 1. Yeah, so in looking at that ninth place at the Travelers, he did he did putt well, but he also gained three and a half strokes on approach, which was his best approach week since the players back okay. in March. Um, so cool. yeah, I, I I like that, and, I, and I'd sort of been waiting for signs of life from Wyndham Clark to get back on him. And what you also got to like is he's played pretty well at this golf course, 16th in 2022, 25th uh, last year here um, at the Open. You know, he only has two. Uh, times at the open but he did come 33rd last year so he has some you know experience on this type of golf course and again he's played well at uh renaissance club and you know again we don't have a ton of stats here but i did look at guys that have you know come top five top ten at this course over the last two years long hitters and good putters kind of is what i found to be kind of the recipe for success here and wyndham clark is a very long hitter and he can be you know at times, one of the best putters on tour. So I just think this is a good course fit for him. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 we've been talking all year about him getting really good odds, but the fact is is he hasn't been playing all that well, so that top ten was very important. And I'm sure he is really determined to make sure that he ends the season strong because it hasn't really been the season that uh, he thought it would be. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm going with Morikawa as my top pick. And uh, originally I looked at it and I said, you know what? Uh, he doesn't have a good history here. So I was immediately, and, and the odds are low. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at Giraffe Kings right now and they're up to 14. So uh, that, that's better. Um, I have him at 12. Uh, but the fact is, is that I said, you know what though? L let, me, let me just take a step back and, and, and a couple of things. First of all, he, he's on a tremendous run, as we know. He's got eight straight top 20s. Five top tens, three top fives, runner-up at Memorial. So he is the hottest golfer pretty much out there that hasn't won yet this year. And when I looked at his two visits here, now, again, the one that really mattered was the one that happened two years ago when, when it was co-sanctioned. He was not playing well at the time. So when he missed the cut, not a big surprise because he wasn't playing well. He's playing really well now. So I'm willing to say, okay, that's not a big deal. Plus your stats show it there this is a guy that's won the open championship yeah so exactly. he knows how to win at this part of the country and maybe the new trend could be as we've seen with, in, with the co-sanction the last two years McElroy, Shafle, two of the top players in the game so maybe that's what we'll get maybe a top player wins again that's why I wanted to throw a top player in there you have a top player as well Actually, you have two yeah. of them. One just happens to be 45 to 1. But uh, I, I just thought this was definitely a week that I wanted to at least have, you know, a really good yeah. player there. And, and I kind of felt that some of those uh, underlying uh, notes made a lot of sense for me to say, okay, I'll, I'll take it even though he's 12 to 1. Well, I mean, Rory and Xander are our two winners here since this, be, you know, became the co-sanctioned co event. So, yeah, there's, I think, that, as you said, Greg, that's why I wanted to have uh, some top players as well, I do think. Um, it seems like a tournament where the top guys, uh, you know, are, are, are good bats. Um, with Morikawa, he just he historically is not a good wind player. Um, and you look at 2022 when he missed the cut here again. That was the year Xander won at minus seven. Morikawa struggled. You look at the time he won the Open Championship. That was a low scoring Open. There was not much wind involved. So I think with Morikawa especially, you want to keep an eye on the weather um, if it's not supposed to be windy. Which last I looked, when I looked uh, Sunday night, you know, last night. It wasn't expected to be windy. That that can change, obviously, uh, you know, on the time here. But um, I think if you're betting more Kawa, you don't want it to be too windy. And by the way, I mean, I'm guessing that when Shoffley won the year he missed the cut, 
mm-hmm. that it was probably windy because the scoring was low. Exactly. Seven under. Yep. So, yeah, that'd be my guess. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, okay, so Hovland. Now, Victor, that's your top pick. And he's obviously been playing a lot better, as we know, the last month or so, um, including third at the PGA. Um, I, I still wonder if, if there's something missing because we, the, the one thing that we just haven't seen him do yet is put himself in position on Sunday and let's see what happens. Um, mm-hmm. Again, third at PGA, but it, you know, it wasn't like he was really uh, in, in one of those situations. Uh, yeah. Why do you like him this week? Yeah, so I do think he's still trending in the right direction, despite the fact that he missed cut at the U.S. Open, 20th at the Travelers. Looking through the stats, it was around the green that killed him, and that's really been, for the past two months now, the ball striking has been kind of like back to peak Victor Heibel levels, but the around the green game has what's been holding him back. Whatever it is, he he likes playing in the U.K. I mean, at, at this event, he's gone missed cut in 2022, and then he came 23rd last year but if you look at victor hovland's open history 12th 4th and 13th yeah um so you know whatever it is and i do think part of it is the short game we know a lot of these courses don't have that you know super thick or off or any of those are really like tricky runoff areas you can a lot of the times you can putt around the green here so just i don't know something about these type of courses victor hovland has done well at um i think it's a good spot and again you talk about if this course is a course where you want to be a long hitter and a good putter you know hovland checks both of those boxes yeah, remember at the end of the year last year, in case you disappeared after, uh, you know, football season and the regular seasons, I mean, the playoffs are over in the PJ Tour. Uh, if you weren't following, he was he kept his great play up over in Europe. Uh, he was fifth at the BMW PGA, second at the DP Tour World Championship. So uh, he was still red hot. And I agree. We talked about this last year. I talked about this maybe about a month ago that, once again, I'm zeroing in on taking Victor Hovland in the Open Championship. If there's a major that I have the most confidence in that he's going to win, it's next week. So, Agreed. Okay. Uh, now, again, you took Clark with your second pick. I went with Fleetwood, and, and I just think this is one of those weeks that I think you just have to take him. And I know the odds are the odds, but – it's 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 not a, a complete field, so I'm willing to forgive that. Even though, yeah, I wish I had a little bit better odds. Uh, Fleetwood is still twenty to one right now. The fact is, he's trending in the right direction. He's played in this course four times. He has three top tens, two top fives, and a runner up. He was sixth last year, fourth the year before that, in the two years with the co-sanction deal. Thirty-four under par over four events combined. And I just think that's just too much. And we know how good Tommy is as far as a potential open championship uh, contender. Uh, so why not this week? And look, it's a PGA Tour co-sanctioned event. He still hasn't won a PGA <laughs> Tour. This would be right. fitting that Tommy would like get like a PGA Tour win in Scotland. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I, so he, Tommy's third in my model this week. It's Rory one, Xander two, Tommy three. So... I'm not going to say he's great value at 20 to one, but like he kind of deserves to be 20 to one. You know, I don't, I don't think you're you know overpaying for him. I think it, it makes all the, all the sense in the world. Yeah. And you got him uh, number two down below uh, in that uh, uh, key stat that we have there. Correct. Yep. Okay. So our third picks, uh, we both went with uh, players that are around 40, 50 to one. Uh, just taking a look at the updated odds here. McIntyre, my pick is 45 to one. Straka, your pick uh, has gone up to 60 to one. So, uh, anyway, yeah. Straka, uh, if you take a look at, uh, the, you actually took him uh, at the travelers, uh, on our last show. And, yep. um, he is coming off, uh, uh, you know, he, he was just hanging around last week. Nothing great, especially, you know, but overall, um, you know, Straka is having a decent year. And, uh, what did you specifically like though about him at this event? Yeah, disappointing last week, but, you know, defending champion, I know they have all different, you know, additional requirements that they need to, you know, do media-wise before the event. So I always, you know, I think it can be tough for defending champs. I'm going to forgive him for the poor outing last week. He he just, prior to last week, he'd been hitting the ball excellent tee to green, you know, off the tee approach, excellent every week. The putter has sort of been letting him down 
lately, but like long term, he, he's a good putter. And I also so Straka played here in 2022, missed the cut, his only appearance at this course. But I like that he had that second place finish at the Open last year. Uh, if you remember, you know, it was kind of it was not that he was ever in it, but it was it was kind of you know, a battle for second place behind Harmon and Straka ended up you know winning that battle. So I like the experience there. I like the fact that he, you know played well in his you know last trip to the UK, and I, I think he's he's pretty good value at 60 to one. Yeah, he's uh, it's 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 happened pretty. You know, he's one of those players where things have really changed uh, for him pretty quickly over the last couple of years. Um, but again, the bottom line is uh, he has he's not coming in here on a hot run, but you are now getting pretty good odds there at sixty to one. Okay, yep. um, and then my pick is McIntyre. Now here's the interesting thing, is that now we all remember last year losing to Rory. Uh, that was dramatic, the way Rory uh, beat him. And, of course, it really killed the, the hearts of those Scottish fans that McIntyre lost. But it was Rory beating him. So uh, that was uh, very tough uh, to take. But I'm sure they were some of them were okay with it. He's been very inconsistent over the last six events, McIntyre. He's missed three cuts in those last six. And he's had top 20s in the other, including two top 10s and a win. And it's happened every other week. So he's been good, miscut, win, miscut, good, miscut. So a couple things I'm looking at here. One is that, well, if that trend continues, he's going to place, same golf course. You know, he's got the crowd behind him. He's playing the best he's ever played before. And why not go after him after he played so well here last year and he's playing really well. Uh, number two, and the trend. Uh, the other thing is, is I think he might actually also be a pretty decent play next week. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm taking him this mm-hmm. week. Something happens yep. where, you know, he's playing okay or whatever happens because, again, he's inconsistent. I still think no matter what he does this week, I think next week he's a guy that might be a pretty good long shot play. Yep, sure. I think he's – I've always thought he was super – I remember – Way early in the season when he was struggling, he was like 120 to one in some event. And I'm, I was just like, you know, let's throw a couple bucks on McIntyre. I just, I think he's just better than what he had been playing, and he, he's kind of proven that to be correct. He's kind of back in form, so I think he kind of is where he belongs on the odds board at this point. I definitely think he's live this weekend. I definitely think he's live uh, next week. He's had, I think, a couple top tens in the Open, right? I think it's like first two Open appearances. He, he top ten both of them. And then our official long shots: uh, Dietrich at 80 to one. McKibben at eighty to one. We've never talked about Tom McKibben before. <laughs> Tell uh, me about Tom McKibben. I don't know much about Tom McKibben. Yeah, uh, McKibben uh, won his first European uh, Tour event last year. Uh, he was ranked three hundred thirty fifth in the world. So, and by the way, he's the same nationality as Rory. So he's now the hundred second ranked player in the world, and he's done that without winning since the win uh, last year uh, in the European Open. Why? Because he's got 11 top 25s in 13 events this year. Six of those are top 10s, two top fives, and a runner-up. The runner-up was two weeks ago at the Italian Open. He has, he's got a lead. Uh, he, he does, he's inside, you know, he's waiting in the, in the wings, waiting for uh, uh, Marcel Seam uh, to come in. And, uh, this, and he was trailing at the, at, at the time. And this dude just nails like i don't know if there's like a 15 20 foot putt on 18 to force a playoff so they go to the playoff and same thing basically happens the german knocks in a you know a 10 or 15 foot putt and beats him so mckibben has been snake bitten but he's been like the most consistent player on the, in the european tour that hasn't won this year and i think uh this is one of these events that um you know maybe because the United, which is like you said, a lot of the uh, viewers in the United States don't don't know some of these guys over in Europe. Yeah. Um, that this might be the event that kind of opens everybody's eyes. And by the way, if he can win an event like this, it'll go a long way in putting him in position to possibly find a way to get into the PGA Tour next year, uh, if that would still be a possibility. But he's got to win. He's got to do something dramatic, and maybe that would be something that he can do on Sunday. Nice. Yeah, I mean, these DP World Tour guys are blind spots for me because I don't have stats on them, and I don't watch a ton of the DP World Tour. So I'm um, not sure I'll bet McKibben, but I'll probably toss him in a, uh, a DraftKings lineup. See, yeah, see how not? he does for me. 
So Dietrich too. Uh, like I said, I, I I've got yeah. Dietrich. I definitely put a couple of bucks on him already at eighty to one. Like you said, uh, he has uh, two good results in the last three years on this golf course, including a runner up. Uh, right. And what I really like about him, and maybe he's even a dark horse next week, even though the guy still hasn't won on the PJ Tour yet. Again, maybe he does a Fleetwood. Is the fact that fourteenth at the U.S. Open, fourth at mm-hmm. the PGA Championship. So he's already had yeah. two, and he did not get to play in the Masters. So in his two major appearances, he played great. And next week's another major, and maybe in an environment that's even a lot more comfortable for him. So whether you take him this week or next week, I, I think he's a play either way. Yeah, Dietrich also came fourth at Pebble Beach, which was an elevated event. He came 20th at Farmers, you know, a, a tough golf course. So he has seemed to kind of, you know, like you said, he hasn't he hasn't gotten the win yet, but he's, he's played well in these um, tougher fields. I like the fact that, like you said, Greg, he's he's played here all five years, including that second place finish to, to Minwoo Lee in 2021. And then again, I'm going to go back to long drivers and good putters. Dietrich checks both those boxes. I mean, he, he's one of the best putters in this field. At least he has been this season. I mean, I'm looking at his stats right now. A bunch of, you know, positive putting weeks and some super big spike putting weeks. So if it does come down to, you know, a hot putter and a long driver, um, Dietrich can definitely do both of those things. 